holding your hand. I spun out your web and I changed what was planned for me. You say none of this was ever down to you. When I asked to talk it out your hand. All right. Hello. Um, my name is Tara Alphonse. I'm the membership and events coordinator at the Iris Academy, and we have another member spotlight today with uh, one of our one of our members, Hope Winter, who's uh, actually I'd say a very a very close friend of mine uh, over the last like year or so. We've we've, we've met each other. We've gone to get together. I've, I've got I've gotten to know her her partner. So it's a it's a this is going to be a very cool conversation for me anyway. I'm very much looking forward to it. But Hope, would you mind just introducing yourself for the people that might not know you out there already? Yes, um, my name's Hope Winter. I'm a 22-year-old singer-songwriter, pianist from London, and um, I'm also a board director at the Arvis Academy as well. Okay. Um, now, one thing I thought would be a good way to start off and kind of throw us off, off topic, maybe... Um, you know, sometimes you like when you do these interviews, kind of create what the question might be and then have an answer in your head. I'm hoping this question might throw that off and then we can get some random stuff. If you were <laughs> to be stuck on a, <laughs> if you were to be stuck on a desert island, what three items would you take with you? Oh, that's such a good question. <laughs> um, I'm a massive foodie. So, I mean, one, at least one of the items would have to be something food related. Um, okay. I'd probably say if I'm thinking smart, like a bag of oranges, because then I'm going to get my vitamin C up. <laughs> it's a good snack to have. <laughs> and you can um, use the seeds again. Yeah, grow some more. <laughs> I think that would work well. Um, I'd probably take my journal just because I'm a I'm an avid journal writer. Um, okay. so I think I would actually drive myself insane if I didn't have somewhere to like put all of my thoughts. I don't know how much I'd be thinking on the desert island. Oh, it's really hot. <laughs> oh no, this is really rubbish. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd probably take that. And then, I mean, I'd love to say something like my guitar, but like, I feel like the heat would just make it, I wouldn't want to see it die because the heat would just make it warp and be horrible. Um, but I probably would say guitar just because then I can write and hang out. Maybe it's like, this is turning into like a little holiday. It sounds quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love those answers. I love those answers. I think that kind of shows how much you think so much, you know, to think like about the heat warping your guitar is how much you're really like considering <laughs> what this desert island might actually be like. Maybe. Um, There's probably some like guitarists that are going to come after me now being like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we live in a tropical island our guitars are fine <laughs> yeah it might actually add a nice little tinge to it a nice little sound that you don't really get uh, but yeah anyway we we digress yeah. um, what <laughs> artists have you been listening to lately so who's in your daily or daily rotation um at the moment i've actually been having the new uh the new silk sonic album on repeat because oh i just love it i love anderson pack i think he's so cool i saw his um his tiny desk i didn't realize that he plays drums at the same time he's just like this beautiful man he's got this lovely big smile and like he was just there like mm. and like all the songs are just absolute bops um mm. so i've been listening to that a lot i'm actually seeing anderson pack next year which wow. i'm very excited for yeah not as a date just as a i'm going to see him play <laughs> <laughs> it'll be nice to just be up so yeah, and then um, I just think it's a wicked album. Um, it's really like, it's quite like retro. It's kind of got that mm. slight, slight like 70s disco, but equally mm. it's really like fresh and modern. Um, so I love it. I think the hooks are great. So I've been listening to that a lot. We've also been listening to a lot of Gregory Porter. I think he's mm -hmm. really cool. I um, don't know whether that's like the two sides of like, I love listening to jazz and kind of, really strong mm -hmm. powerhouse vocals but then also pairing that with like absolute jams so um mm. yeah i said those are probably my two most played at the moment 
Is that what yeah, that that um that Silk Sonic album is is very silky indeed. Um, oh, it's so. You good. know, I, I I only recently learned that, I, and I might be completely wrong here, but Anderson Pack, you know, he learned to play the drum in 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 a choir in church, so you can yeah. kind of hear the gospel the gospel music within his uh, his own like music as well. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, well, it's the same with like. Writing. Yeah, like I think uh, Corey Henry is a, is incredible, and he's got mm. like the kind of like the church roots and like his like key skills and just like it's the same. You know, like I remember learning about Aretha and her like ch- mm-hmm. church organist teaching her how to play. So there are all those proper like gospel soul chords in it, but in a really like mm-hmm. pop modern way. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd say that's probably my favorite style of music to listen to just makes me feel happy <laughs> yeah I also think there are a lot of talented people that do like incredibly talented musicians that do gospel music but they you know because it's gospel music they're just not as as well recognized yeah um, I think yeah and it's just it's really nice as well like even in today's sort of industry I still really mm-hmm. respect musicians that have spent so long on a sort of instrumental craft um especially when it comes to keys I don't know what it is about keys it's just they're so hard (laughs) so I just think seeing or like yeah even like a rhythm section I think the thing with Anderson Pack like doing a rhythm section at the same time as leading and doing vocals like I don't having those two parts in your head I just think is a real talent yeah um so tell us a bit about your own music uh Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, my like, how would you music. describe your uh, your own your own music in your own words, or your work in your own words? My work over the past sort of year, I'd say, well, since I've moved to London, has had quite a rapid revolution, and I think that's just because I've been working with so many new people, and that I think the relationship between an artist and a producer can so drastically affect how the music sounds um mm-hmm. so it's been really interesting learning all of that and kind of experimenting a bit with something new but equally thinking how I can still keep it true to what I've done and you know my music is very lyrically led and very you know a lot of influences very sort of female powerhouse vocals led um there's nothing I love more than sort of shout singing <laughs> um <laughs> So yeah, it's sort of, it's neo soul, but it's got roots in like pop and jazz. And yeah, it's always a difficult question to kind of nail it down. Mm. Um, But yeah, so it's been, it's been really interesting sort of developing it. And like, I think a lot of that I've been like, it's more come from program drums and producing. And I've always, you know, since I started, it was very much more acoustic led and I kind of thinking about songs in more of a traditional like four or five piece band arrangement Mm -hmm. sort of way and it's been really freeing kind of working with producers and finding something new um so yeah it's uh it's in a new direction but I like it so yeah that's really interesting you say that I think it's a good segue onto the next question maybe we can hone down as to like why that is and where your influences come from because the next question is what would you say your biggest influences in music are or have been Mm, that is a good question um yeah I feel like my influences kind of split off into two so I have a lot of uh like lyrical influences because my Mm -hmm. music is very lyrically led and that just Mm -hmm. that's like you know like Joni Mitchell and Lauren Hill and um, Theo Katzman I think is amazing his lyrics are amazing Um, so I take a lot of they're they're kind of separate from my like performer influences I would say because I spent you know my day job effectively is like I'm a performer like my I do a lot of clubs and I I do a lot of session work Um, which I think is funny I think a lot of original artists when they're kind of working their way up they kind of are faced with the decision of do I do music do I do a job that's sort of in music but not exactly where I want to go or do I do something that's unrelated to support it but then I kind of miss performing as much so yeah so I I kind of I do I sing a lot and I've I've had to kind of 
figure out what my act is separate to, from a lot of the work that I do. Um, but it's equally been really helpful for my own acts, kind of learning and taking from performers. I mean, like, I obviously love Aretha. I think she's incredible. I think a lot of the, like Nina Simone, a lot of the kind of piano vocalists from that era, I just think they're incredible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Lake Street Dive, I think is, is amazing. They're like this another really big band. Um, I recently watched George Benson, one of his concerts, and I just thought he was, he was just incredible. He was just there, like, he's so, like, cool. Like, he just, he just sings and plays as if it's just absolutely rolling off his tongue. Like, the same with Aretha, I just, it just comes out. Like, I, I think she mm. genuinely just can't help but sound incredible. Um, so, yeah, I was just, like, I was watching George, he was kind of, like, he was scatting, like, whilst he was, whilst he was playing. And I, I take so much inspiration from all those incredible, like, really big performers of that time. Um, because I think all the roots are are completely about how strong the song is. Like the 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 shows are so song led. Um, so you can I just I just watch in awe and like they're all just incredible sort of show men and women. Um, so yeah, my my influence is kind of split off into two. There's like the performing side and then like the lyrical side. Um, but to be honest, I just I I try and be a, a bit of a sponge, um, mm. and and listen and and take inspiration from anything I listen to. So, yeah. <laughs> that was a really great answer. I can really see those influences in the stuff that you do for the Islands Academy. I think two that really jumped out for me were Nina Simone and Aretha Franklin, who in their own right were amazing performers, but were also you know amazing bosses. You know they actually they were very much on. Um, knowing where their money was going, you know, what, mm. who was, you know, looking after their, their copyright and they were very much involved in that process and that's something I can see, or I see you doing a lot with your work, especially in the Ivers Academy, uh, part of yeah. our youth council and sitting on, on our board. Um, so yeah, it, it's a, it's a great, it's a great uh, cohort of people to be in the female bosses, I suppose, and uh, it's definitely something yeah. I see, I see you headed in future. Oh. Well, that would be amazing. I mean, there's plenty, <laughs> plenty of them to be inspired by. <laughs> this member spotlight was kind of an idea we had or we wanted to do because you've got a, a new single coming out called The One. I do. So I, I, wonder if you, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about that, maybe about how you write it or how you wrote it, sorry, and, you know, what your writing style kind of is like. Yeah. Um, so this was actually a song that I sat on for quite a while. Um, and it was, <laughs> it's funny because my my songwriting covers a lot of different topics um like from my life i i write in a in a kind of very emotional state um so mm. a lot of my songs are like about grief and bereavement and like some of them are political themed like there there are lots of different things um but this one is just a classic breakup song <laughs> um so i <laughs> i wrote it uh, at the beginning of 2020 and i'd just come out of a a long-term relationship um so it's the classic I just sat in a room um I was feeling lots of different feelings because I I'd initiated it and so yeah I just it was literally just before lockdown happened um so I had at my old flat I had a little shed where my music stuff was and I just sat in there and I think I wrote I think I wrote like four or five songs um, and I think that's like something that doesn't get talked about enough about how many songs you need to write or, or you might write. And then you kind of have to refine like which one is actually good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I wrote it. It was kind of it was one of those ones that kind of all just came out at once. And then I spent time kind of being a bit more meticulous about the phrases um, and then I did a really rough demo of it and then I literally forgot about it like most of the songs I write they just stay in a folder in a demo folder um, and then I kind of yeah this year when I came when I'd come back to sort of thinking about making an original song again um, I was just going through and then I was like oh that's quite a good one 
um and then yeah showed it to the producer i was working well i, I work with um alex mm -hmm. temple healed who's uh very talented and uh yeah showed it to him and i was like yeah this is how it was it was just on guitar and i was like mm, sounds a little so sounds a little bit boring at the moment it'd be cool to like play with some production elements and then he just took it and and made it fly and and made it sound how i kind of had it in my head and there were things that he but like he's he um studied classical percussion um which i think you can definitely hear in it like there's lots of the sort of percussive elements in it even if they're kind of very small details um to me it adds a lot to the song and yeah so it just kind of grew and yeah it was one one of those ones that's taken nearly two years to kind of get out there um but yeah i'm very excited and it's out on friday so <laughs> very exciting indeed very exciting indeed i'm looking forward to it um, i i mean i i i've got this uh massive appetite for music so i i listen to so much but when it when it comes to um people that i i, I know personally i always like to sit on the music for a bit maybe not listen to it until the right moment and i think i'm yeah. going to be doing the same for that one you know waiting for wait for a nice either a nice gloomy rainy day when i'm either coming from work or going to work and i put the music on yeah. for that one Oh, the pressure you have to tell me what you think it's definitely <laughs> one of those it's the it's a very much like a sort of listening back and it's a very chilled one um yeah <laughs> and and you also released uh i guess a track or a single for a, for a vashi ad uh, called i need your love so bad yeah but no 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 pun intended <laughs> or I'm not trying to make a rhyme there but <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> um, can you tell us a bit about that? How did you? How did? How did that come come to fruition? Yeah, so that was another really random one. Um, I feel like yeah, when you're when you're a singer songwriter, there are so many like random jobs that just like come up um, throughout the year. So yeah, I I got that ad. I knew the arranger, um, a guy called Pete Latanka, who's a who's an amazing musician um literally just from my hometown i just like know him as a family friend um and then they wanted a set a uh, session singer to kind of sing through the song um and he was like oh hope could do it so i i kind of went not really not really thinking much of it was just a, a day of singing and i didn't think it was going to be anything more than that um and then they just really enjoyed what we did together with the song and then they were like well do you want do you want to do the final thing and i was like yeah i do um <laughs> so yeah and then we just uh we started with the, the 30 second version for the ad um which was really it was a really interesting protest because it's obviously it's there's the fleetwood map version and then it's also little willie john like a really old sort of blues blues it's a really old song um mm. so i kind of i i definitely wanted to honor where it came from um and uh yeah so we started with the 30 second version so we kind of had to puzzle it together and then mm -hmm. um and then later on they were like well if you'd like if you'd like to do a full version you know go for it and again i was like yes please um so yeah and it was kind of a way of creating that i'm very confident with it was it was back to kind of all the musicians in a room there was a string quartet and uh kind of making covers new and, and feeling like me and yeah it was a, it was a really amazing experience and and bashi were very kind to sort of bring me in as much as they have um so yeah, it was a real highlight of the year because obviously c kind of coming out of COVID, like creatively and financially and all of those things professionally, I was a bit like, oh God, I'm kind of getting back into it. But we've all had nothing to do <laughs> for mm -hmm. a year and a bit. Um, so I was kind of very t like tentative about going back into the working world and thinking like, oh God, what am I doing? <laughs> um, so it was just another one of those moments that felt very like validating. Um, so yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> it, it is a very cool video, um, and I'll be sure to you know link both uh, the one and the um, the Vashi ad down Thank below uh, for people to check it out. You you mentioned um, that you obviously you 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 do 
more than just write your own music and perform your own music. You do sessions, you do covers. Is there a different feeling when you're performing in a cover to when you're performing your own music? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, I think there are, they do feel very different. Um, I think when I'm doing an original show and it's been, it's been a couple of years since I've done an original show, um, there is no feeling like it because it, you know, you've got a captive audience who are there to come and see you and it's your words and your show and you're in complete ownership of it. And that's a really empowering feeling. And there is literally nothing like kind of coming off stage after you've just done it and you've, you've got your, like your band and people there. Like that is the feeling that I love as a performer. Um, so it is different. And when I do, you know, my like function work or, or session singing or covers, I do love it. And it's, I think there's a lot to be said for when you when you play so many songs that have you know cover songs cover songs um i think there's something to be said for like how much you can learn from all of these in incredibly successful songs that are still being sung today they're still really popular like there's a there's a period of time from the kind of like the 70s to like sort of 90s r&b that like that whole period all of those songs are still being sung today and I think that's like quite amazing um so there are so many songs that I've kind of learned back to front I've played them hundreds of times um but I genuinely don't think I would have learned as much about how to kind of construct a song and like the chords and lyrics and like playing something live and looking at all the different elements of the band playing and like throwing a solo to someone like even though I don't get quite the same feeling sort of emotionally and that sort of gratification for me as a as an original artist as a performer mm -hmm. I have learned so much by playing covers like all the time um at any time I do a gig I learn something new and that again, that and then that in turn informs my like my own acts because then I can be like, right, well, I know now that when I'm on that chord, I can go and give a guy a, you know, a 36 bar solo or something like that, or mm. like, oh, that's a really nice 11 chord that he's put in that. Mm. I'll do a song based on that. Um, so I think yeah, sometimes there's a stigma about like, oh, I'm an originals artist and I don't want to do any of that which is completely fair enough and I think it is good to keep that in mind and kind of protect your own creativity but equally I think you can learn a lot from the greats that have come before if that makes sense <laughs> no completely and I think that's something that was a great answer by the way that's something I hadn't even considered <laughs> is that your repertoire of music from arguably one of the greatest periods of music in history in human history is, is, is incredibly vast. You must know so many different arrangements and sounds and stuff to kind of pull from your own learnings to kind of influence your own music. No, it's very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, <laughs> I kind of lost myself in my question and just thinking about that. Um, oh, yeah, yes. you say so, that and then uh, the next gig that I'll do, I'll be playing Valerie for the, the hundredth time. <laughs> <I'm like>, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that, mate. Matt, Valerie is an like, absolute cracker of a song. In that. I'm sure it you is, did it justice. <laughs> um, so, as you mentioned, you you're uh, you're the co-chair of our of our youth council with Imogen Williams, the amazing Imogen Williams. You're also on our our board of the Ivers Academy uh, as an under twenty five director with Imogen as well. Um, you're very much involved with the Ivers Academy um, and and its workings and its uh, its um, its direction, I suppose. And you 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 are a big influence, I suppose, an advisory to the board as to how we um, make sure that we're representing and we're accommodating under 25 music creatives in the UK. How has the Ivers helped you get to where you are today? Oh God, massively, uh, massively helped me. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I first got involved last year um, when I became a board director. Um, and yeah, it was just, it really, again, it kind of really, for me, validated the legitimacy of my career. I just felt very, 
very grateful to be given an opportunity you know i was a i was a 21 year old board director um and that in itself was just incredibly validating um to be given that sort of yeah that opportunity um for me that it was it's been really helpful to kind of have an avenue to um explore my political passions i've always been a very political person i was brought up that way um i'm not very quiet about that. um <laughs> and i'm obviously yeah very passionate about the industry that i'm in and um helping it become a better place for all the creators that there are rather than you know for the privileged few that that get to be in it because it's a very difficult it's a very difficult industry to get into and a lot of the time yeah it's, it can be incredibly classist and all of these things so for me to be able to play a part in making it a fairer industry um was something that has been invaluable and I, I I really wanted to get into and I kind of didn't know how apart from you know just talking directly to like my local MP or something like that I didn't really feel like there was anything else I could do um so being involved in campaigns and and events and and you know like the the Brennan bill even going up to be debated in court is like incredible um so, so it's even to have a small part in in that happening has yeah been been really helpful um and yeah just i mean just being part of a community that's full of creators is amazing i think this uh, particularly being a, a solo singer songwriter maybe it's different if you're in a band i don't know but it's it can get really lonely um and at the time when i first started with the ivers i just moved to london and i like I didn't really have any friends and I didn't really know anyone because I didn't I didn't go to a uni or a, or a music college so I kind of went in really like oh I'm I'm kind of on my own <laughs> um so it's been amazing meeting all the people that are involved in the Ivers who are all very like-minded um it's been a, it's been such a privilege working with Imogen um my my co-board director um yeah so it's it's been it's been amazing really it's kind of helped me to flourish in the way that i had you know really wanted to so yeah it's been it's been great <laughs> it's been great working oh, that's with you good to hear. Tarek. <laughs> ah, no, thank you thank you very much you're just you're just <laughs> saying that because we're on an interview and you have to say it but thank you very much <laughs> um i i i yeah i think I think what you say is very true like the Ivers Academy is a place that really does connect people that otherwise wouldn't meet um and, and we're especially with the new senate we're hoping to do that for a lot more than just um a certain few um segments in the music industry we want to do it for everybody um and you kind of touched on I guess meeting people and connecting with people one of the peoples I saw that you teased that you've been working with is one of your fellow senators Cassa Beatmaker who's worked with the likes of The Streets, Akala, Plan B, just to name a few. Um, yeah. What was that like? What was that like? <laughs> it was actually amazing. It was, um, <laughs> I kind of, I was obviously very, so I met, I met Cassell in one of the um, songwriting committee meetings. Um, so I, I met him on there. I kind of, to be honest, I can't remember even what I was saying. I think we were just, chatting and I don't even know if I chatted him directly I think there might have been like one or two things where I was like yeah I agree with you um and then yeah he just reached out uh and was like I'd I think it'd be really I'd like I'd love to work with you on a track or you know just come to the studio um and I <laughs> he doesn't know this but I went home called my brother who's a massive plan b fan I was like, Cassell wants to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh and yeah, I went and I was yeah, I was really nervous. I kind of I kind of went thinking, right, I can I could do I'd give myself a little pep talk. Um and then uh yeah, he was his studio is amazing. He was there with his friend Eric um and Marcina. 
um, so two other writers in there, um, and they'd already kind of had this little riff going, and I just found it so easy to work with them. Um, it was one of those ones where I kind of I wrote this song to what they'd done. It's a really really good song. Um, I'm really like I I want to get it out there. It's it's really cool. Um, yeah, he's just really easy to work with. He's a lovely guy and he's incredibly talented. And he kind of he he really thinks of things that I didn't didn't couldn't see. Um, like we kind of got halfway through writing this song. And he was like, right, that the verse needs to be the chorus. The chorus needs to be the pre-chorus. That needs to be a bridge. And he kind of like mm. re rejigged the whole thing. And it sounded like a million times better. It was like, oh, right, this is like a proper song now. Um, mm. And I just didn't even think to do that. Um, so his like his ex his expertise and experience really like I it obviously really came across. Um, so, yeah, he's just incredibly easy to work with and mm. I felt very privileged to be there and I've got an absolute banger in the bank so I'm <laughs> very, very grateful to him <laughs> no I'd I'd second that I could say Cass is such a down-to-earth genuine guy and then you walk into a studio and then you see this Ivor next to his desk and you're like oh you're an Ivor novella award winner like, <laughs> yeah so Cass, that's just insane um, yeah, very much looking forward to, to hearing that song. Cass, if you're watching, mix it, master it, put it out. because <laughs> kind of We need it all as soon as possible. Um, we've only got a couple more questions left, I'm afraid. Um, but me and you can continue chattering after, after this interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, would you, what would you advise to, to all the upcoming singer-songwriters um, in the UK? I guess specifically those that are independent like yourself, because you very much are independent to the team. Yeah, um, I would say stay informed on the political sphere that's going on um, because all of all of the all of the things that are happening in the industry affect you um, directly. Um, so I would say, yeah, I think no one's above politics. It's to, to get involved in it. Um, even if it's just in a in a small way, um, I would say uh, brush up on all the ways that you can earn money, um, all the ways, all the different ways to earn an income. Having multiple income streams, there are so many different ways that you can kind of support yourself. For me, like the last couple of years, is is I've really focused on becoming completely financially independent through through music um so there's so many ways you can do it um they're just not necessarily you're, you're not really told about them um certainly not in like traditional education i don't know about like unis or music colleges but yeah there's definitely ways to do it that aren't you're not told about so go out and find them um and i'd probably say don't let the unglamorous parts of the job put you off <laughs> <laughs> um and write all the time like write all the time because that that you, because there's going to be so many bad songs but mm. it's worth it if there's one good song <laughs> mm. I guess we never really touched on before I asked that last question it's one more one for me we never really touched on on your writing style how how do you go about um you, you did I guess a, a bit in that um you say that you know you when you were feeling that emotion that after your break, you went into your shed, you locked yourself away, you wrote, you wrote the one. Yeah. Is that always how you write music? Do you have to like have a feeling and then you lock yourself away and then you write three or four songs and then one comes out of it? Or is there, is there a more traditional or uh, maybe traditional is the wrong word, but a style that you do more often? Um, I mean, I've got a big notes page on my phone full of kind of like lyric ideas that I kind of save as a bank. Um, hmm. So actually when I went into that Cassell session, I literally just got that up on my phone and mm. there was just a phrase that I was like, oh, that fits really well. Like the 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 syllables fit really well with the riff that they've come up with. Um, so I think the more I collaborate with people, I've actually realized that I I do feel like a very collaborative writer. Um, the, the more I kind of get older and, and work with more people, I, I think I've just always been a very collaborative person by nature. Um, 
So I definitely probably feel like the the easiest way I find it is if the music is there first, like even if it's just a few chords or like a beat or whatever it might be, that's what prompts me to kind of, I've, I'm a very like confident top line writer and like with the lyrics mm. and stuff as well. Um, so that's where I'm like the strongest, I'd say. Um, but it kind of varies. I mean, when I first started writing, it was very much like I was still learning how to play instruments. So sometimes it was that this the idea and the vocal idea or the melody came first. And then I was kind of like, what is the chord that I'm hearing in my head? <laughs> how can I put it to that? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, lots of different ways. But yeah, at the moment, I mean, it's probably gonna, it probably will change in waves as I, you know, carry on with my career. But at the moment, I'm very much on the sort of collaborative vibe um because yeah it's it's just nice creating as part of a team so yeah like it, this is the same with um alex temple who's a <laughs> he's gone yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it's all right a of a, like a murder movie it's like, no. <laughs> um yeah it's very much the same with alex temple healed who i work with as well um he kind of like creates the the sort of musical idea like the bed for what I'm going to write over um but mm -hmm. sometimes it's just me on the piano or guitar and I, and it all just comes out at once it kind of varies <laughs> cool cool <laughs> yeah that was no thank you very much for that we have only one more question left hope and that is what is next for you what have you got coming up uh so my my new single the one is out on friday the 20 26th of november um and it's out on all platforms that you can stream um and uh yeah next i am just uh working on lots of music as much as possible and um yeah hoping to get some more music out soon at the start of next year so yeah sick that was <laughs> such an enjoyable conversation. I really, yeah, I don't know where the time has gone. We've been chatting for like 40 minutes and it doesn't feel yeah. like that at all. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, I just, I guess we'll just end it there. I'll stop recording now. Um, where is the stop record button? Certain things I don't know not to say Cause then you turn around and tell me I should go Next to a woman you love